Hi, I'm Jenny Miller of Let's Get Sewing. Are you ready to take the fear and frustration out of your sewing experience and finally get to work? Then you are in the right place. Be sure to click subscribe so that you don't miss any of my tips and tutorials to help take your sewing journey to the next level. And now, let's get sewing. Today I want to talk to you about something that is part of my sewing process and I know a lot of people do this, some people don't, but I wanted to explain to you why I finish the ends of my fabric before I pre-wash and what is the best way to do that. So in order to do that I actually did a little scientific test. I guess it was scientific, I don't really have a control. but. Um, I took three different kinds of fabric. I have some linen, I have some quilters, cotton, and I have some flannel. And the reason I did that, um, linen tends to be a more loosely woven fabric, and so that can affect the amount of fraying. And then of course quilters cotton is a very tightly woven fabric so that also affects the amount of fraying and then flannel is also a woven but it's different from either of them because it is um, agitated i guess to give it this um, fluffy finish it's kind of brushed and so um, i wanted to see how that might affect the fraying as well and so i made three swatches of each of these three fabrics and I tried three different techniques for finishing the ends of your fabric. Now, I typically serge the ends of my fabric because I have a serger, it's set up, it's fast, and it's easy. However, I realized that not everyone has a serger, so I thought I would try a couple of different techniques that might be more available to more people and just compare and see how it all worked. So with the first set of swatches, I serged the edge. With the second set, I used pinking shears to finish the edge. Pinking shears will typically keep fabric from fraying too badly. And so um, I brought a pair of pinking shears here for those who might not know what pinking shears are. They are these zigzag scissors. You may have seen them for scrapbooking and that type of thing, but they do make them for cutting fabric. They're called pinking shears. And so when you cut the fabric, it's called pinking the edge of the fabric. I have no idea where that came from. But if you're cutting on the grain of the fabric, each of these little teeth is on the bias and the bias doesn't fray. And so that's the theory behind using pinking shears to finish the edges of your fabric. And then on the third set, I did a zigzag stitch along the edge to finish it off and prevent fraying. And then I took all three of my swatches and I threw them in the wash. And I actually put some other things in there to kind of agitate them more. Because typically if you're pre-washing your fabric, you're pre-washing a big piece, there's lots of agitation going on. With my little swatches, I didn't think it would be enough agitation, so I put some other laundry in with it. So let's talk about those results. First, I want to talk about when you wash your fabric without finishing the ends. Have you ever done that? And especially if you still have a traditional washer with the um, agitator in the middle, you know how you often it comes out wrapped around that agitator and you have threads and strings that are wrapped around it or have wrapped back around the fabric and you have to break them in order to open up the fabric um, and sometimes you've lost as much of an as an inch of your fabric to fraying which is always disappointing but especially when it's cut off grain sometimes you lose quite a bit more on one side of your fabric so I made sure that I cut these as well on grain as I could. Um, I had so many little pieces of fraying that came out in the wash with them. I brought some of it with me, um, or pulled some of it out to show you. Um, I'm going to start actually at this end with my zigzagged pieces because I want to show you this one. This is what I'm talking about. When you wash a big, long piece of yardage, pre-wash that, you get these and sometimes they wrap back around the fabric when you pull it out and it's just a mess and you have to untangle that. Now I will say that most of this came from the sides of the fabric that I did not finish. This is the side that I did a zigzag stitch on. 
I did the zigzag stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric so that it was really close and um, wouldn't lose too much to fraying. And it's done a fairly good job. Now there still was that little eighth inch of fabric out beyond the zigzagging. And some of that has frayed a little bit. That's not too concerning. And that's not enough to tangle up in your washing machine. So the zigzag on this piece, which is the linen I forgot to mention, did a fairly good job with a little bit of fraying here at the ends, but I would not call that significant fraying. I would call this significant fraying. Like I said, this comes from the sides that were not finished. The next piece is my flannel and I did the zigzag and I'm going to hold the back of this here. So hopefully you can see the zigzag stitches again, about an eighth of an inch from the end of the fabric. Now flannel did not fray nearly as badly as the linen. Remember linen is more loosely woven. I think it comes undone much more easily in the wash. So even more essential that you finish the ends of your linen before you pre-wash. The flannel, because of the way it's brushed, I think probably holds some of those threads together a little bit better. But you can see here, there still was fraying that went on. You know, here where I didn't finish the edge, we lost almost a quarter of an inch of fabric there to fraying a little bit here at the bottom and sides but this side that i did the zigzag again tiny bit of fraying this isn't anything that i would be really overly concerned about but i definitely think that zigzagging would help with your pre-washing and i pretty much had the same results with this piece of quilters cotton and again i'm going to show you the back you can see the zigzag very close to the edge Everything up to the zigzag did fray on this, but being only an eighth of an inch from the edge, that's only an eighth of an inch of loss to fraying. I think that without the zigzag, it would have been more significant like this edge where I've lost almost a quarter inch at the top, not so much at the bottom or the sides. Again, quilter's cotton is more tightly woven, so you might have less fraying in the wash. I would still recommend the zigzag stitch as a viable option for finishing the edge, if that's what you need. I forgot to show you this side too. This is the kind of tangling that can happen. And you know, if that gets all bunched up in the wash, then you have to break them and everything to open your fabric out flat. Next, I want to talk about the pinking shears. Now I have used pinking shears on hundreds of hems of pants. Um, they usually work really well for hems and that type of thing. But in my pre-wash experiment, they did not hold up so well. This is my linen swatch. And I think this is the side that I used the pinking shears on, but I honestly cannot tell. I've lost equal amounts on both sides of the fabric swatch. Um, I've got strings out here. Now I did not lose horrendous amounts. I only lost about a quarter of an inch off of this, but pinking shears on the linen, not a terribly helpful option. However, on the flannel, the pinking shears held up pretty well. I can still see my pinked edge here. Um, so it held on to that, those threads fairly well. You can see I lost a lot again up here, um, some strings down here. So pinking shears might work okay on flannel, probably you're getting more help from the brushed aspect of the flannel than anything else. And then this is my piece of quilter's cotton. And this is the side here that I use the pinking shears. I can kind of see the shape of it here. I lost as much as a quarter an inch here in the middle. Um, but then I didn't lose as much on this side, which was just cut straight. So go figure. But I don't know that for this kind of washing and for this kind of open yardage, that pinking shears are your best bet for finishing the ends of your fabric. I will say though that they work well on men's dress pants, which get dry cleaned for the most part. However, a dry cleaning machine does just as much agitation. They'll work well on like chino type pants. The Twill um, Dockers are a brand of chino pants. Um, they, I know for a fact that they work well on hems in those kinds of pants. So last of all, I would like to talk about serging, and that's what I do. If you have a serger available, 
I think serging is your best bet for finishing the ends of your fabric before you pre-wash. Because as you can see here, we lost oh, a good quarter to three eighths of an inch on this side. We have a lot of fraying going on down here, a little bit at the top. But the side with the serging has absolutely zero fraying on the linen. And remember the linen with the pinking frayed so badly, I can't tell which side I pinked. And the um, linen with the zigzag fared fairly well. But compare that, this, this side here to this side here, and serging definitely worked the best. Um, same with the flannel, completely finished off the serging side while I had minimal fraying on the other sides, and with the quilter's cotton, again, absolutely no fraying on the serger side, whereas I had some fraying over here on some of my other edges. Now, I'm not saying all this to tell you that you need to go get a serger because a serger would be very expensive if all you were going to do is finish the ends of your fabric. But if you have a serger, I think a serger is your best bet for finishing these ends because if you need that extra quarter of an inch, you can remove the serger and you still have that, you know, uh, three sixteenths to a quarter of an inch where the serging was, whereas with the zigzag, you've lost a little bit. But if you don't have a serger, and again, perfectly fine, my recommendation to you then is to zigzag the ends of your fabric or the edges of your fabric. It's fast, almost, pretty much as fast as the serging, definitely as easy, and did a really good job. Just be sure to get that stitching right along the edge, about an eighth of an inch from the edge is probably the easiest place to do it without scrunching up the fabric really badly. So. I hope you have found this helpful. I hope that after seeing this, you will decide to finish your ends in some way if you haven't been. It's definitely worth the extra, maybe two to three minutes it takes. It's gonna save you that time in untangling your laundry and pulling out things. It's also going to save you fabric that you might lose to fraying. So, so finishing your ends is definitely something that I will keep doing. I hope it's something that you will start doing. And now, Let's get sewing.